So I'm going to be presenting today with my colleague uh, Tad, uh, who who works in the farm development piece of Roche, and I work in the global access HD evidence piece of Roche. Um, we're just going to talk a little bit of sorry, going to give a quick uh, introduction into some requirements that we need to fulfil for our work, and then we're going to go through two example packages that have been developed to sort of try and illustrate what these requirements mean in practice. So in general, there's sort of two motivating requirements we're trying to meet when we're thinking about the use of our um, use of our and in general sort of the things we're doing for HTA or access purposes. So one is we do have a global focus, and so there's a, a large number of HTA agencies we need to meet the needs of. And sort of also non-HTA bodies such as payers are also interested in these uh, activities analyses. Uh, and while the requirements differ greatly. Uh, Excel and Word are typically accepted or, or mandated. Uh, the other piece is that we do, as um, pharmaceutical industry, we do have to meet certain G good clinical practice GCP requirements on computer software validity. I'll uh, put a couple of links into here what these mean. Um, we're just going to sort of mention a little bit what this means in practice as we sort of get to some of the examples. So from a, a sort of overall view, I just had of curiosity had a quick look to see where which of our affiliates and which countries had been sort of downloading and using sort of Excel-based economic models. And in the last couple of months, there's sort of 63 countries. And, and just pulling up the requirements of one of them for Canada, for Canada uh, that there's a strong preference for Excel. And while it is definitely possible to approach agencies with alternative options, that, that may not be what you want to do as, uh, as a sponsor. You maybe want to meet what they, what they want, what they ask for. So that's just a bit of context. However, this is this is our HTA conference. So, so why am I talking about Excel? So where does Roche use R today? So internal models for internal uses. So, so early cost effective models were to explore trial design, uh, are very possible to build in R and in R shiny and R done so. Uh, account management tools, when it's going to be presented by a Roche employee, we see a good good use case here, particularly sort of budget impact models. Uh, our Shiny can do this very nicely. Unfortunately, it doesn't play so nicely with iPads, uh, and a lot of our field force use iPads. So this is a bit of a limitation so far, but hopefully that will be solved slowly. Uh, and the main piece we're going to talk about today is actually for, for doing statistical analysis for inclusion in either Excel-based models or Word dossiers. Uh, so whether that's Bayesian analysis to use in JAGs or, or for analysis of clinical trial data, whether that's for a dossier or to inform a model. Uh, and with that, I'm just going to hand over to my colleague, Tad, who I hope is on the line and unmuted. Yes, uh, I am. Hi, thanks, Ian. Tad. Thank you so much. And I just uh, thank you for the invitation. And, and to be honest, it's probably a topic that you you might be using, might be curious, you know, how this R could be uh, could be done in uh, not, 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 not your HTA space, but how it's actually in a regulatory space. And R, and actually Roche is, is quite advanced. And then I wanted to really present you the open source uh, part of, of our regulatory framework, which is R tables. So next slide, please. So as I said, this is this is this is the this is the link to the open source, and this is the package to these uh, to that was designed to really do the complex R implementation tabulation, and the, and the currently it can out ask in HTML. It's available in CRAN, but most importantly, what we do it actually we use this as a backbone for our solution to create many our so-called uh, standard outputs around 240 and actually we are working with other companies to kind of work together next slide please and with those one okay so here you start it's really basic it's what and what is what is behind the scene it's really kind of deep layer style where we start building actually our our table and we save it as a layout and later on we basically build the table with this so here at the moment we just add the the column uh, variable arm, and then we build it. Next slide, please. And this is kind of going into more uh, uh, more uh, advanced one that you can. It's still it's easy where we can actually add an analysis. So we 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 create this function quickly uh, here where we where we can actually define how it will look in the rows. What 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 is the format? What 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 information should be shown? And at the end again. We, we build a table and we get our, our tabulation. Next slide, please. 
And here you can see uh, just as a kind of uh, presentation that we also how easy it to add call counts. So you can see they appeared as a number of, of arms. So this is the typical output that we would do. And the next slide, please. And or for instance, you have, of course, additional variable for, for the analysis like race, it appears here. Next slide, please. But of course, the, one of the most importantly is that with this tool set, you can, you can create the sets of your functions that you can later use it and really minimize the, the amount of code and create really useful uh, visual tabulation in this case. So if in, if in this instance, this is my fun, I can create this one. But with this, this is kind of recipe you can you can actually go and and retrieve other um, uh, out of your interest the the implementation uh, statistical implementation or HDA implementation and do this. And in the next slide here, you can uh, yeah uh, on this one you can see how quickly as it is on a, on a build uh, table you can see you can create this you can actually have this layout and later on actually put the different data and filter them. Uh, uh, for an instance and so on. So it gives lots of lots of flexibility. And most importantly at Roche, we actually validated our tables for our proposals and it started to be using in a normal regulatory framework. So I hope it also can be used in a, in a combination of the HTA uh, work that you all I, guys do. Next slide and back to you, Ian. Thanks, Todd. Uh, and so for the second case study, and, and I think it's very important to show how this has been used in regulatory context, because a lot, of, a lot of the HCA work follows the regulatory work, and so we need to reuse these dossiers, so we need to have some sort of consistency and workflow also internally between what we're doing for regulators and HTA, and particularly being able to build such sort of uh, analysis tables for inclusion in dossiers is, is a big part of the workflow. So I'm going to go through it very quickly through another uh, example package. and. On this slide is just some links that will be available afterwards. So the link to the repository and links to some documentation for these uh, sort of five packages we made available open source. Uh, and today I'm just going to quickly run through Flexive Plus and later this afternoon, Javi and Valerie are going to work, run through DeskSem uh, as well as a separate presentation. I'd like to make some quick acknowledgements that many Rush colleagues worked on this and also we've worked with Mango and Bresmet previously on the development of some of these packages. So the example we're going to work through is Flexor Plus. And so what can it do? So essentially, it just called, makes it easy to run flexive models for the purposes of economic evaluation, thinking about oncology. So with a single call, it basically runs a lot of flexive models in the background and forms the result in a certain way. Uh, so hang on. Why did we do this, given sort of serve HE or flexive can already do this? So, so one is we do see the value of the efficiency of having a single call to fit a lot of models. Uh, the other reason, or, or, or why why don't we use surf HE for this, which I think is the obvious question, is the this validation piece, the number of dependencies. It, it's a lot easier for us to to validate packages that have a very limited dependency set. So we really focused on limiting the packages that are used or called uh, within this package. This, this just simplifies our life when it comes to validation for use on our computing system. Uh, and also through having the vignettes available externally, we wanted to bring some consistency, transparency in how we're working or, or how we're approaching things. So it's very transparent. This is how we're thinking about how we fit certain models, what assumptions we make. Uh, and so the rest of the presentation, I'm going to quickly run through, jump through a few of these vignettes. Uh, because I'm jumping about, there's a link here to go through the vignettes in a bit more detail, because uh, I'm going to skip a lot of steps. Um, to install any of these packages, it, it's just you know, dev tools install from GitHub, very, very simple. These are not on CRAN. Uh, they're only available directly from GitHub. Uh, and for the rest of the example, one of the functions we could just simulate some time to event data so that we can run through examples without having to share any IPD or find real examples. Um, and essentially, this is the one call that's the main focus of the package. And as you sort of see, it's just allowing you to fit a lot of models, a lot of parametric forms. Uh, and the sort of the different model shapes are sort of aligned as common shape, independent shape, and separate models. And essentially, these are fitting. Uh, I think 32 flexive models in the background by doing all this, but you get them all in one core, which sort of simplifies the workflow and the efficiency. So, so why bother with these independent shape models? And, and so this is essentially putting treatment effects on every parameter in the model. So for a Y bullet, it's putting a, a treatment effect on the shape and the scale. Uh, and this is the same as sort of doing two calls to flexive for each arm separately. 
but has the benefit of doing it in one call. It allows you to test with sort of, uh, if you need those extra shape parameters, looking at things like a generalized like a GLRT or an AIC parameter. Uh, for uncertainty, the way we've been thinking about this, and, and again, this is thinking about having these going to Excel later, is to think about bootstrapping. So we're trying to reduce the amount of calculation done in Excel. Uh, and so we're trying to do the auto uncertainty exploration in, in R. So we just bootstrap around that same function. Uh, again, the same call type here. And you get out of that uh, a lot of parameters that you can just plug directly into your Excel model. And then your Excel model is just a case of a sampling from these. Uh, and, I and I realize that I'm talking about Excel a lot in our, our talk, and I apologize for that. Uh, and so the next bit is like, why should, why should we care about correlation when we're doing this PSA? Um, essentially, if we think about doing the PSA in a, an oncology model, maybe your cost is primarily driven by your duration of treatment uh, and your sort of gains are driven by your survival. And you could imagine you could do your sample from these two uncertainties around these two times event distribution separately, but you get a very uncertain cloud because you could randomly pick your uh, cost parameter from a sample that's uh, very long survival and your survival parameter from one that's very short. And, and really we want something that looks like this where you would expect these to be a bit correlated. And just gonna run through this with a simulated example. Looks like this where we have some PFS and we have some OS and these have been simulated to be correlated uh, so that the progression free survival and overall survival is correlated on a patient level. Uh, and again, we just go through the same as before. We just fit some models and we're just gonna boot, go straight to bootstrapping because we're, we're really interested in uncertainty. We're not so interested in point estimates generally. And all we're gonna do for the second parameter is we're just gonna reuse the same seed. Uh, and the reason for this is so that what we're doing these sort of bootstrap samples, we're fitting our PFS, uh, say our PFS or time to off treatment or, or whatever it is parameter to the same bootstrap samples as we're thinking of overall survival. Uh, and so we get out of that sort of two boot samples and we see they're using the same underlying samples. And so if we now sample from these sort of parameters jointly, we should be maintaining these correlations. And, and because we sort of set this all up uh, to give us output that's in a very flex serve nice way, we can use any flex serve sample. So normally we'd be doing this step in Excel, but then so we're just illustrating this in here, here in R. So we're just calculating the means of these Weibels and these gammas. And again, because we're doing it from these bootstrap sample that's correlated, we can sort of see that we're sort of maintaining that correlation through to the output. So this is now just showing that mean, the, each of these dots is sort of one PFA, PSA sample or, or one sample from these two joint bootstrap distributions. And we can see if we sort of maintain this correlation by using this joint seed, we do see this, uh, more of an ellipse than an oval. Whereas if we sort of break down and just sampled from those two separately, we can see how we get more of a circle, which is what we expect, uh, but sort of illustrates why we think this maybe matters and, and why we think it's valuable to sort of approach the uncertainty this way. Uh, and you can also do this in Excel because then your Excel model is just sampling distributions as you would for including an NMA into an Excel CE model now. So hopefully we're on time. Conclusion is that so R is definitely able to perform HTA relevant analysis. Uh, in general, we're seeing it replace SAS rather than Excel in our workflow. So we're seeing it replace the statistical analysis. We're moving more and more to do that with R. I do see that it could be a scope to move computation from Excel into R as sort of a bridging step. Uh, so we sort of try and limit the amount of Excel computa computation to just sampling from distributions to, to run PSA. Uh, but we're really trying to limit the amount of calculations in Excel where possible. Uh, and the last thing is that we're very open for collaboration to sort of build these tools with industry and non-industry partners. Uh, and you can reach us at sort of first name dot last name at rosh.com, both Todd and myself, um, if you have any phone questions. So. Lovely. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Ian. You have a very calm delivery style and I wasn't looking at the clock. Uh, but here we are, we're almost against time, but we have a few minutes for questions um, now. Um, so I'm just going to go to the view. So if people want to ask a question, maybe put up your hand. It's a bit easier for me to see than it coming up in the chat. So if people want to ask a, a question of Ian or Tad here uh, about Roche's use uh, of their, their own versions of existing packages or their adaptations, please let me know. Uh, just as people are getting ready with questions, Ian, I'd like to, to ask, why did Roche choose to make these open source? What, why did you um, go to the effort of putting these up on CRAN and 
you know, it takes time to create the documentation and so on. What was the motivation there? Uh, so I can, I, I'll take that for, for the HA person. I'll kind of send Todd to speak to the R table's motivation. Uh, so the first point for, for the, we, we think it's really important from a transparency perspective. Uh, we don't necessarily have a lot of space in dossiers to include a lot of detail about the analysis performed. We maybe don't have a lot of space uh, to have a technical appendix. So we're, we're sort of trying to think, see this as almost like a, a technical appendix of, of how we're approaching certain approaches both for our HTA submissions, but also when we're working with vendors. It facilitates easy collaboration if we can uh, point to a, a vignette for, for Mike uh, or for, for this survival analysis, and we can sort of get some consistency that way, but I've been very transparent on the methods without necessarily having to share every time the um, all the analysis code for a submission, which maybe includes a lot of detail that's less interesting than focusing on the, the methods point. So that's a bit of the rationale from HTPs and uh, Todd from our tables, yeah, I think yeah. it's a little bit different. Yeah, I mean, a little bit, a little bit different, a little bit the same, but actually it's also trusting the code. The first of all, we, we build this R table package really to answer the, uh, the, the, the kind of growing need to, 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 to uh, switch from SAS to R, which is the, the kind of uh, trend now among big pharma. And we actually collaborating as well among the biometrics uh, statistical programming uh, uh, groups and, and actually for big companies to 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 bring this uh, to, to the space and this is one of the elements we have also interactive visualization how we can do this much more let's say uh, effective but I think it's also for us is the trust with with the uh, with the health authorities because we also thinking how we can uh, submit uh, the, the the data and uh, and the dossier in the future more uh, going out from from static more into the interactive visualization and so on so this is one of the first steps actually to do this and 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 it's and from from this perspective is also uh, how other comp uh, how other or, or industry is accepting those the solution instead of this probably this like a small window of opportunity where uh, companies can work together on something rather than on a separate silos. Mm. Yeah, I was I was just wondering, to, uh, do you know if any uh, rival firms use your packages? I mean, that would be probably the uh, possibly the ultimate uh, endorsement if you, if uh, you knew others were using it. But uh... of course, there are there are others. I, I mean, I don't want to say this is the, uh, the this one. GT is the other one that that our studio is working on. There's a tip layer. Uh, there is a table one, and so on. Uh, we, we, we also were looking and we find out, well, there are, there, there, none of them are actually 100% satisfy us. That's why we also put an effort and really created something. It was kind of one, one, more than one year of work on that uh -huh. uh, to do this. I just want to reflect a question from uh, the chat. Uh, so Meryl Hegeland is asking, has Roche produced a, a HTA submission in, in R only? And if so, what was the experience? Sorry, Meryl, to have voiced your question is- uh, Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> Uh, so not that I'm aware of, um, and again, it goes to the the, the, the point that one, one of the reasons, uh, particularly from the role, role I'm in, from trying to support many affiliates globally, uh, we're looking to meet multiple requirements with all of our deliverables from an efficiency standpoint, so we don't want to be creating custom uh, analyses for, for each market. So while some bodies may be open to this, uh, we're not seeing it universally, so we're not able to get that efficiency by doing it for, for multiple countries. So, so far, no, as far as I'm aware. Okay, um, I'm, do we have another hand there? I'm just, I don't want to be missing. Oh, Gianluca, do you want to go ahead? Um, just a very quick comment. I think um, Ian, I think made a very good um, good point about some of the main packages, the mainstream packages, being very heavy on the dependencies and that's just the nature of it if you have a big package that is general purpose and it does a lot of different things then it requires to kind of lean on different things and that makes it a very heavy so for example survey chi is very very heavy it's perhaps even um, heavier than than flex serve to some extent because it it, it it draws on on different packages to do its own thing but this also i think think is going in towards an, a different direction in a very exciting direction the kind of the rhda verse where effectively you can split up functions and make smaller packages that again lean on each other so 
This is something that we were starting to think about whether we could split up some of the functions of survey chi and create five, six different packages. And I think there's a good discussion to be had there in the community because then you want to balance. You don't want a gazillion packages because that makes it harder to, to know where to go and what to use. But, but point taken, and there's actually a very good point. Indeed, Gianluca, you might be burning through some of our topics of discussion uh, tomorrow. So let's uh, keep some of these uh, topics uh, on ice. Yeah. I want to uh, pause here. Let's try and keep to time and resume. I know I've consumed four minutes, uh, but thanks very much to Ian and Tad there for that. We'll take a break and we'll resume according to the uh, according to the timetable. So that's a quarter to the hour. We'll be back.